Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the real United States and welcome back to my kitchen, this very tiny kitchen that I'm working in right now. And welcome to our cooking segment again. And I've been doing this week or this month, I've been doing a series of, well, unusual things that are cooked here in the United States, not necessarily indicative of American dishes, but things that you can get here and uh, are served here. And these two lovelies that I've got right here in front of me, these are bull testicles. That is a bull testicle. And they have a skin on them that has to be peeled off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to peel these, I'm going to split them in half. Then I'm going to put them in a, in a flour and paprika with a little salt and pepper in it mix that I've made up, an egg wash, some panko breadcrumbs, and then we're going to deep fry them here in some vegetable oil until they're golden brown. And then we're going to see if I've got enough nerve to actually eat these things. So hopefully I'm going to do this. I've never done this dish. This is something that uh, we found in the Latin market. It's popular in Latin culture. I guess this is a throwback from Spain. Uh, it was considered a very macho thing for bullfighters, of course, to eat the bull's testicles. So it's still a very big part of Latin culture, certainly in traditional circles. I don't know about the young folks so much. These are $3.59 a pound here at our local Mega Mart. And uh, a couple of them weigh, oh, a little more than a pound together. So that's that. I've got a good sharp knife. And uh, these are a very soft thing, as you might suspect. So I'm going to try and get these open. You want to basically just split the skin here. And I've seen this done, but I've never partaken in it. Relatively good thick skin on the outside. And the way I've seen this done generally is they split this and then peel it in halves. I suppose there's as many different ways to do this as there are cooks that have prepared this. But, being this is my first time, we're going to just kind of do the best we can. Now this is something I had anticipated because I had seen this, but I, uh, it's a little different. The meat, instead of being kind of pinkish, is more of a beige or tan color. And uh, trying to get these loose is a little bit of an effort. But they seem to be separating. I don't know how long this is going to actually take me. We'll see if we can do this without a cut. Yeah, they're pulling away. Not as difficult as, say, skinning an animal. So, but uh, they, uh, I want to tell you folks, these things have a very pungent aroma. Uh, I don't know how to really describe it, but it's, it's quite, uh, quite pungent. So, trying to do this without tearing them any more than, you know, is going to be just part of the process. But you have to get this skin off because it's, well, as you saw, quite tough even to cut through. So, this is not something that you can use. This is going to be discarded for no other reason than it's just it's not anything anybody can chew. Now, chefs that have done this a long time, many, many times, well, they make this look so easy. Like, you can just pull this skin right off of there. But it's, uh, it's just not the case. They tear. And uh, I suppose doing it for the first time and doing that for the first time on camera, well, makes it a little more, <laughs> a little more challenging for me. Now, as I was uh, preparing for this episode, or by preparing, I mean psychologically preparing, I was thinking, well, that here in the West, certainly, we have no compunction about eating eggs. The, uh, the female sex organ, this is female sex cell, not organ, but cell. 
but yet there's something in uh, Western culture that normally will turn their nose up at this sort of a, of a piece of the animal. And I'm just making a mess out of this. It's not peeling as nicely as I had hoped, but it seems like it came largely away from the skin. I'm going to finish making that cut in half, and let's see if we can do the other one. Now, Now, if you happen to be one of my viewers in Mexico or Spain, someplace where these are more commonly prepared, I would certainly appreciate any uh, pointers <laughs> on what you see that I'm doing wrong. Because I'll bet you there's a bunch of things I'm doing wrong. So unless, uh, you know, if, if you haven't had this dish before, well, the likelihood of you finding it is, is relative, here in the United States relatively rare unless you seek it out at a Latin market. And if you do, I really can't see why you would except to freak your friends and relatives out. I think that's a, <laughs> a common pastime here in the United States as we cook something weird and then serve it to our friends and family and then tell them afterwards. My understanding is that you can cook these pretty much any way you want. You can deep fry them, which is common here for those places that serve them in the United States. They are served at some restaurants um, in the United States, especially in the, uh, the West, uh, like in Colorado, places like that. Both uh, bull testicles and sheep testicles, often referred to in their sheep testicles as Rocky Mountain oysters. And I'm mutilating this a little worse than I'd hoped, but we got most of it free, so certainly enough to go ahead and prepare this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this into my flour and paprika with the salt and pepper already in it. Get that breaded up a little bit. Then I'm going to egg wash this. It's just an egg beaten up with some water. And finally, into the panko breadcrumbs. Try and get that to stick on there pretty good. And I got it, some oil set up over here, which has gotten way too warm. There it goes. Now, as far as the cooking temperature, that should be, I guess, about 350. I overshot my mark a little bit there, but it's going to come down. And the time, well, until it is done, the directions that I saw were until it is golden brown. That fat is way too hot. But again, these are relatively soft meat, and uh, they're relatively small pieces. So it isn't going to take but a little bit to cook them. Okay, so I think my oil has cooled down to about 370 degrees, which is still a little warmer than I'd like it. But I've got it turned off now, and hopefully while I'm uh, in the process of cooking these last few, it will cool off enough to where it's going to give me a nice even cook. A little flour, a little egg wash. Little panko. And that seems like a much more reasonable temperature.
all your seasoning is in the flour. Although I do tend to season these after they're cooked as well. Oak. We got them all in. Let me rinse my hand. More than enough residual heat in my oil to go ahead and cook these. They're browning quite nicely. Maybe I will put a little more heat back into them. Hot fat frying is one of those things that's always I have figured it's been more of an art form than a science. Now maybe that's wrong. Maybe if you've got a fry -later with a very rigid temperature sensor that holds the temperature versus doing it on top of a stove, maybe that's it's as much science as art. But uh, certainly when you're working on a range top and with a gas range, it can be sensitive to heat fluctuations. My first one got more more brown than I would have liked it to have. I'll toss it back in there though to make sure that it's cooked without, you know, it's not gonna probably burn now. That's looking quite nice and golden brown. I can hear the jokes already. Paul, that's nuts. Yes, it is. So I guess they're done. So I'm going to let those cool down for a moment. I'm going to clean up a little bit here. We'll come back and we'll cut them open. Okay, so outside of the first one that I put in when the oil was way too hot, they've turned out really nice and golden brown. I've got myself a little imported uh, Mexican hot sauce here. And let's go ahead and cut one of these open and see how it looks. So there we are. It seems to have cooked nicely through. I'm going to put just a little spot of this hot sauce on it. I think this would probably go immensely better with alcohol but that's just a personal thing. Here we go. Hmm. That cooked nicely through. Well, like I said before about taste, it's not an objectionable taste, but it didn't, I don't have no frame of reference to explain to you what it tastes like. I mean, you recognize that you're eating meat, but I don't have a, a, a simile for it that would be accurate. It certainly doesn't taste like beef. But, uh, yeah, not too bad. I don't know as I'd go to that much effort to do it again right away soon, but uh, I certainly have no objections to it.
It's not a it's not a terribly strong taste. But it's certainly pleasant enough. So whatever that happened to be, I don't know, three months or so to to cook each one of those, three to four minutes. Uh, when I finally got the oil the right temperature, and ice is very it's very tender, and uh, it's it's not soft or mealy. It's uh, it's like a very tender tender meat. No, uh, not objectionable taste at all. Very very mild, very pleasant. But it's getting it past your mind that uh, because we don't uh, we don't eat these much here in the United States, so it's something very foreign, very outside of our frame of reference that makes it a little more challenging. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me prepare bull testicles for the first time. And I'd certainly like to hear what you think about it down in the comments section. So please leave me a comment down there. Tell me what you think. If uh, you've got some tips or tricks that you know how to do a better job with this, I'd certainly be interested in hearing about it because I'm sure some of my viewers in parts of the world other than here probably have a lot more experience with this than me. So I'd love to, I'd love to hear from, from all of you. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to pick subscribe and come along for the adventure. You never know what we're going to do next. I love having all of you with us. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.